uh, how to avoid burnout. Uh, there's six things. Uh, I need to get going because there's six points, all right? <laughs> Number one, don't do everything yourself, okay? You aren't Superman, okay? You aren't Superman or Superwoman. Number two, listen to godly advice. Folks, this is important. Listen to godly advice. Uh, you know, when I uh, feel overwhelmed or, you know, and again, I can't say burnout personally, but, uh, you know, there are, there are pastors, you know, that I, I go to. There are pastors that go when I'm stumped, and I always have those available there. Number three, ask for help. You know, do not be afraid to ask for help. Number four, invest in others. Part of ministry is uh, reproducing yourself and reproducing people for ministry. And the whole deal here, and I believe this with all my heart, we have everything and every resource we need here at the church. Okay, people are our resources. And uh, we need to invest in others. Number five, don't sell people short. Okay, don't sell people short. Uh, there, there are a lot of people that, you know, uh, they give somebody a task to, but they almost micromanage that. Not everybody's going to succeed like you have, uh, but uh, don't sell people short. Number six is get organized. Um, I can honestly say, as growing up, uh, I, I was not an organized person, uh, but after marrying a uh, bird colonel's daughter, Okay, and after having <laughs> my uh, father-in-law, first time we were back, they had a TV room back there where his stuff was, and I looked at his closet and I went, oh, wow, you know, and I'm, I am not kidding you. If, if you look at his closet back, and we're talking 40 years ago, and now I walked in my closet the other day and I thought, <laughs> Jim Hilsel, <laughs> my father-in-law, my, my clothes are there, I rotate my shirts, I rotate my ties, you know, and I learned that uh, from him, but folks, we have to be organized, and I'll, I'll share that with you. In Exodus chapter 18, we know uh, Jethro was Moses' father-in-law, uh, don't have time to go through the first 12 verses, but I simply want to say that uh, somewhere along the way, uh, Moses' wife and kids went back home. Uh, Moses stayed, and he led uh, the children of Israel. So uh, they were getting closer, uh, you know, out of Egypt, closer in travel uh, and all that was going on. And so Jethro takes Moses' wife and his kids and meets up with them again. And uh, we know his father-in-law was a priest of Midian, uh, and again, it was a Gentile priest, but I still believe that he was a holy man, and uh, he offered sacrifices uh, unto the Lord. And, uh, you know, I believe, I really believe he helped Moses in all that he was going through. So I want to start in verse 13. Verse 13, Exodus 18, 13. And so it was on the next day that Moses set to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses from morning until evening, okay? And here, here's the deal, folks. Uh, just Moses at this point. So it's one of those things that it was like his work was never done. Now you think morning to evening. Morning is right after daylight. Evening is right before sunset. So we're not talking about an eight-hour day, okay? We're talking about a 12-hour day probably. Okay, and so and so he he was he was there to help them. So Moses' father in law saw all that he did for the people and said, What is this thing that you are doing for the people? And why do you sit alone? Why do you why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you uh, from morning till evening? And the other thing you have to understand is I could see where Moses would be overwhelmed. Folks, he was leading two million Jews going anywhere from 1.5 to 2 million Jews, okay? And, and you look out there and you could just see there's this waves, wave of people. And there was all these people waiting. And again, you know, this is before the law, okay? These were judgments. These were, these were things that thus saith the Lord. And, and Moses was their spiritual leader, 
okay? But, but that, that is just an awful, awful lot of people. Then, verse 15, And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God when they have a difficulty, they come to me and I judge between one another, and I make known the statues of God and his laws. And again, folks, I, you know, I don't know what, I honestly don't know our church membership exactly, but I just, you know, when I, when I came up on stage for the first time and I looked out there, I knew we had a good crowd, but I had no idea we had 656 people out there. And the bottom line, even with 656 people, folks, uh, there's no way that I can take care of that many needs myself. I just cannot do it, okay? And what I've learned over the years is I don't have to do that, okay? Uh, you know, I have Steve. I let him take care of everything. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it's shared ministry with Steve and I. We both, uh, there's nothing I do that he can't do. And the only thing that he can do that I can't is sing a solo, okay? I, I've led music. I know you, you may not know this, but I've led music before. Not here, okay? Small Baptist churches in Oklahoma. Okay, and again, I'm not a staff member. I'm just saying... I was at a revival one night, and the singer didn't show up, and the preacher goes, I can't lead the music. You need to. I said, okay. So I led the music. Steve, I never even told you about that. <laughs> and, and preached that night. And, and what I'm saying is, you know, you look at two million people, and you look at Moses there, and folks, there's no way he can take care of that many people. And you look at Jesus even, okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 4, look at this. Jesus himself did not do things by himself. Matthew 4, 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, uh, called Peter and Andrew, his brother, cast in a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Okay, fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Okay, and, and again, you talk about investing in two fishermen. They had not been in the ministry. They had no formal education, okay? And immediately left their nets and followed him. And from there on, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father, father and followed them. And we know uh, he called all 12 of the disciples. So, at the beginning of the ministry, we're in Matthew chapter 4, early on in Jesus' ministry, he got 12 guys to help him, and he poured their life into them. So, uh, you know, the first way to avoid burnout is don't feel like you have to do everything yourself. You are not Superman. You are not a superhero. When I first came to this church, we had no staff. Zero, nada, okay? And I was doing the preaching, I was doing the music, not music, we, we did have an interim music guy, or actually it was a girl uh, when I got here. And then uh, I did the youth, and I even did the children. And you do it out of necessity, but real quick, uh, I found out, man, I can't keep all this up. And uh, we started out with volunteers, uh, there was literally volunteers that helped me before they became staff members. We didn't pay them a dime for what they were doing uh, because just of the way the situation is. But don't feel like you have to do everything yourself. Number two, listen to godly advice. Look at verse 17. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. Okay, not good. And again, you know, he was a priest, uh, you know, he was older than Moses. Uh, he was observing, okay? And folks, don't take all of observations as criticism, okay? I, I do what I call filter suggestions, okay? There's a difference between a suggestion and criticism. And I will just honestly tell you, if you are in the limelight, if you are the head guy, you are going to get criticized inevitably, okay, it's going to happen. So I don't take things personal. And, uh, you know, Jethro just said, hey, uh, 
man, you, you just can't keep doing this. Uh, this is not good for you. And, uh, you know, one of the, one of my, and, and I don't mind saying it at all, uh, one of my, and I, I can't say mentor, but one person that I look to uh, is Brother Dale Thompson, who just retired at uh, First Baptist. Uh, you know, I, what is it? It's, it's April now. Uh, in from January to April, I've called him twice on two issues and asked him to help me pray through these two issues. And uh, I have a great respect for him and what he has done and the wisdom that he has had. And in both instances, the advice that he gave me was very, very good advice. I took the advice and I did exactly what he told me to after much prayer. So folks, go to godly people. Go search you know, it's not a thing of polling nine people, okay? You're, you're, you're almost wasting time because nine people are not always going to agree on something. Go to somebody that the Holy Spirit uh, tells you to go to and seek out godly advice. Proverbs 1. Look at Proverbs 1, if you would. The proverb of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction and wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, which again is discernment. Folks, we go to people, all right? We go to older people for advice. There's wisdom in them. But the other advice comes from the Word of God. We need to follow the instructions. We need to follow the Word. Uh, I'm just telling you, every problem that you have in life, there, there, there is a verse and there is Scripture that can answer that problem. And, in, and even at that, folks, sometimes we need to search those things out and, and use those two things. Use godly wisdom and use uh, advice uh, from uh, el you know, older, wiser people than you. Verse 5, a wise man will hear and increase in learning. Folks, I, I, at 63, you know, I do have wisdom. You know, I, I, you know I, I do. I do know that. But I still haven't arrived. I don't have an answer to every problem in life, but I know someone who does. Okay, I can either call someone up that I respect or we can go to the Word of God. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Be careful who you go to, folks. Be careful who you go to. To understand a proverb and an uh, ignimba, igna, which is basically a puzzle or a riddle, the words of the wise and their riddles, and here it is, the fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge. Folks, what does God think? Okay, what would God do? What would Jesus do in this situation? But fools despise wisdom and instruction. We need to go uh, to senior adults, to people that have been there, that have been in the war. We need to go to prayer warriors, okay, for godly advice. Third thing, and here's where a lot of people, they won't do it. They, they will be on the verge of burnout trying to do it themselves. Number three, ask for help. Okay, ask for help. And, and I wish people who know, you know, a lot of times will say, we need this and we need this and we need that. And, and, and it does happen most of the time. But sometimes, you know, uh, people just need to be asked. If you directly ask them, uh, then they're more likely to say yes uh, than if you don't. Uh, so look at verse 18. Both of you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. Look at verse 19. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people that you may bring the difficulties to God. And again, you know, when we look at that, uh, you know, the Word of God, uh, you know, you know, Sometimes all they need, all, all you have to do is encourage people, okay? Even, even with this, if God has told you, if that person's 
uh, name comes to mind, tell them, you know, that that's what was going on uh, in your personal life. Uh, look at verse, chapter 17, verse 8. Chapter 17, verse 8. Now, Melchizedek, uh, Amalek, excuse me, came and fought with Israel in, at Repidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek. And tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur her, her went up uh, to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed. And when he let it da his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands become heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, and his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. What did he need? Folks, we all need friends. Okay, we, need, we all need people that will join with us in ministry. And, and when you get tired, Moses had obviously done this for, uh, you know, a, a few hours. And if you've ever tried to do that, just hold your hands up, you know, or even hold them out for a certain amount of time. You can't do it all day. And this war was going on. And, and these two men, these two friends uh, come, come beside Moses and as long as they were holding his hands up, uh, they won, and, and they won the battle. Uh, so, uh, folks, that's, that's what I love about, uh, you know, friends, and that's what I love about our church. Uh, you know, we're to the size now that, uh, you know, there, there are people that can help you. There are people that, uh, you know, uh, that we can help and use for the glory of God. The fourth thing, how to avoid burnout. Invest in others. Look at verse 20. Verse 20. And when and you shall teach them the statues of the laws. Remember, uh, the, the Ten Commandments hadn't been written yet. Okay? So Moses was the one that knew that. So part of his job was teaching. And part of that, another word we like to use is the word training. You have to train others. If you ask somebody to do something, we, you need to train them to do that so that they will know what to do. And you shall teach them the statutes of the laws and show them the way which they must walk. What does that teach? Not only teach them, show them. Lead by example. Okay? And, and I have always tried to do this in the ministry. I do not ask anybody to do something that I am not willing to do myself. I'm not going to tell you, y'all go knock on doors and me staying at the house. Okay? We have to show people. And, and Scott knows this. Uh, and he's the same way. I, I get a thrill out of that. When we start knocking on doors out at Chaffee Crossing, it's like the door number one, number, two, number three. You have no idea who's going to open that door. And, man, you get, you get to start a conversation there. Uh, it is really, really cool. So teach them, show them in which way they must walk and the work they must do. Folks, there's some things that has to be done. And we have, to, we have to teach folks that. We have to show them the way. We need to lead by example. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. Okay? So even the chosen leaders need to have these qualities in, the li in their lives. They need to respect God. Okay? They need to be men of truth. Truth is the truth of the word. Truth is telling the truth. And hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And uh, one of the most successful work I did in college ministry, uh, and again, we, we were one block from the college in Lawton at Cameron Baptist Church. And, uh, you know, we didn't have a college ministry. I was doing uh, the youth, and, but yet they wanted to start a college ministry, so uh, they wanted me to lead out that and start. And when I, the first Sunday that we, they were there, it was one teacher, and it was me, and it was two college persons, okay? And, and we just started going to the college. We started, 
uh, asking the few that we had, give us names you know, of people that you go to school with or somebody that you know. And I am telling you, in one year's time, we went from four to running about 60 to 70 in college. And what we did, or what I did was, it got to where uh, the numbers, uh, I, I couldn't handle it all. I, what I did was I took the 70, I got seven of the early leaders and made them team leaders. And what we do is I would teach the lesson itself and then we would break down and answer questions and have small group times. And do you know, of those seven leaders, three of them are, no, four of them, excuse me, are in ministry even as we talk. Okay, one, two of them became pastors. One became a missionary, and another became a preacher's wife. Okay, and instead of me trying to take care of 70 people, we broke those down. And folks, I'm just telling you, when you have to, you know, and you see the numbers that Moses was dealing with, 1.5 million people, you have to have that, okay? There's no way you can minister all that. So, you know, uh, investing in others is so, so very important. Uh, I just want to, we don't have time to go to Acts chapter 11, it's on your sheet, but basically that is talking about where Barnabas took Saul and he mentored him. And folks, think about that. Barnabas, the son of encouragement, mentored a man that wrote one-third of the New Testament and became the greatest preacher, the greatest evangelist, the greatest soul winner, the greatest church planner that, that's ever been. That's why, that's why we need to invest in others. Number five, don't sell people short. Don't sell people short. Look at verse 23. If you do this thing, and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure uh, all this, and the, the people will go uh, to their place in peace. So Moses heeded the voice of his father-in-law and, and did all that he said. Folks, I believe with all my heart, everyone, and, and I've been saying this for years, if everyone would do one thing in our church, if every member had one job to do, I'm telling you, we would, we would have every ministry field, we would be doing everything that God has us to do. I remember when I first came here, Claire, you, you know what I'm fixing to say. I'm telling you, the, the, the few that were here were on three committees. They were doing everything because we did not have the pool there. And that's why it is so important that one is we invest in others, and then once we invest in them, we let them take over and take charge. And folks, uh, you know, I, I know there's other ways to do ministry. You know, you can't, you can't, you know, say you're going to do it my way. You can't demand. The thing that we understand, even with Moses here, folks, we're talking about volunteers here, okay? And I understand we need to have a high standard. Okay, but, we, but there are going to be people that fall by the wayside. There are going to be people that don't succeed. But you have to just keep investing and letting people do their thing. Uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 3. Romans 12, 3. For I say to you, through the grace uh, given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one with a measure of faith. For we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So being many, we are one body in Christ, individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing to the grace that is given to us, look at the next words, let us use them. Folks, there is so much talent in this church. There are so many gifts in this church, and we need to be using our gift for the glory of God. If it's prophecy, let them prophesy. Preaching uh, uh, in proportion of our faith. Or ministry, let them use it to minister. He who teaches in teaching, who exhorts exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence. We need leaders. He who shows mercy 
with cheer, uh, cheerfulness. Folks, we need all these gifts in our lives. And, and what, what frustrates people sometimes is we ask them to do something that is not in what I call their wheelhouse, not what God has called them to do. All right, There is nobody that has all these gifts. You, there's not a person that has every gift that we just listed here. But you have, you know, everyone has one gift, okay? Because God gives you that gift. It is from God. It's not you deciding. And if we will just let people work inside their gifts, I'm telling you, it would be a well-ran organization. And so, uh, you know, don't sell people, don't micromanage, you know, don't criticize, work at people's strength. Then the last thing is in, is in uh, verse 25, get organized. Get organized. Look at verse 25. And Moses chose able men of, of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, hundreds, and fifties, and tens. And the other thing there is you need to put people where they belong and where, where you can see their, not just their gifts, but what they'll be able to handle. You know, someone handling 10 people is nothing like someone handling 1,000 people. Okay, you, part of our job is to get you where you belong. Okay, and I don't even want to say where you are comfortable because some people need to stretch. Some people have the potential to do that, but they just don't think they can do it. But I'm simply saying, you know, somebody that uh, can, can lead 1,000 and lead 10, you know, you're, you're talking about two different animals there. So be wise. Oh, much prayer, much prayer when it comes to that. So they judged the people at all times, the hard cases they brought to Moses, but they judged every small case themselves. And, and folks, you know, you look at what, uh, was, what went on and what Moses was able to do, and, and everybody, folks, I'm telling you, if you go to church, there's two things you want. You want to be fed. Okay, and I'm not talking about, you know, meat on the table. You want spiritual food, and you want to be needed. Okay, and part of our job as Christians, and part of what we try to do, uh, Steve is going to start a week from this Sunday, uh, the new members class. We want to incorporate everyone into one of our ministries so that they will feel fulfilled in what they do, plus it's their ministry. They're the ones uh, that are helping out there. And then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he, he went his way into the, his own land. Uh, the last verse, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, 40. And you can ask Lori, this is one of her life verses. Okay, this is one of hers. Verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. Okay, and... I'm just telling you, uh, I, I, I learned much from her uh, about doing things and organizing things. Every Monday morning, every Monday morning, the first thing I do uh, after Steve and I pray, uh, Steve and I pray every morning together, every morning before we start work, is, and you can go look on my desk right now if you want to, uh, there's a tablet about this size, and on that tablet, they have the lines, and I just start writing down everything that I need to get accomplished that week. And some of my frustration <laughs> in life is I don't mark them all out. I, I want to finish it every week and get them done every week. And, and you know, I'm, I'm a doer. I'm a go-getter. Uh, I like to work, I, you know, and, uh, but that's part of the organization. Uh, the other thing that I realized because I'm 63 years old is my memory is not what it used to be. <laughs> okay, I used to, could remember, you know, if somebody said, hey, give me a call, or hey, do this, or hey, that. Uh, and folks, you would not believe, well, you should believe. I stand out there, and people every Sunday, I, I have to try to remember anything, anywhere from 8 to 15 things there. And one of the things that I do uh, on Sunday night is I go home and, and I put the old bank on. You know, Lori bought me a recorder one time, and we were, 
and, and I just wasn't comfortable with it. I'll just be honest with you. I, I turned that record. I felt like I was doing something illegal, you know, when I did that. And, you know, because so many people give me prayer requests. And I'm not complaining. I want to be out among the people. But part of getting organized is write it down. Write it down and write it down. Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you that, uh, Lord, you really don't want any of your uh, leadership, any of your you know, your kids, your your people, uh, to be burnt out, uh, to be discouraged. And God, I know Satan works on us. I know uh, sometimes the burnout is just pure spiritual warfare. But God, I pray that uh, even tonight that they would take this worksheet home and they would just look it over and they would just look at their own lives. And to God, even, even more than that, God, I pray that they would save this worksheet. And Lord, it's going to come up in life. Uh, Lord, uh, when I look at this, uh, you can apply this to a business. Uh, you can apply this to any organization, uh, Lord. And, and again, we're applying it to your church because the Bible says, we just read straight from the Word of God uh, what needs to be done and what should be done. And so with the application, uh, God, I pray that if there's some frustration in this room uh, that uh, they would ask for help. And uh, God, I pray that they uh, wouldn't sell people short. And God, I pray that they would uh, bathe things in prayer, Lord. Uh, I know there's challenges to any, any job, any work, anything we do for the Lord, uh, there are challenges. And Lord, I know the biggest challenge in my life is balance. Uh, you know, I, I'm a husband. Uh, I'm a papa. I'm a, you know, I'm a pastor. And you know, to just keep all that in balance is a real challenge. But God, you can do it. You know, you can do it. I, I go back to the verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Lord, there are times I get physically tired in the work. But God is my witness. I never get tired of the work. God, I've been called. I love my job. I love the people I work with. And I love your church. And God, we love you. So God, just help us. Do our best to avoid burnout. And God, help us to be able to mentor other people. And God, I pray for just other staff members. I, I, don't, I don't see an issue with this, with our staff. But God, I know there's some preachers and there are other staff members, members that are just burnt out. And God, I just pray that we would just lift them up in prayer and think of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for joining us this evening at Rye Hill Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.